All right, welcome to part two of my uh, three-part series here on uh, upgrading my PC uh, with the items I previously unboxed. Here's me. So anyway, the <laughs> this here is my PC as it stands. Um, I actually have the Thermaltake uh, Level 10 GT uh, gaming case. Basically, it's a very expensive case, but you really do get what you pay for with it. Uh, it's really a just a fantastic case. Um, I mean, just looking at it, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? you got these hot swap bays that come out that you can put your different hard drives in. Um, which, you know, is really good if you're using the... Uh, different way of using the hard drives that you can hot plug your SSDs or your even your uh, other SATA drives, which is real nice. So, anyway, also got really good cable management. So I recommend this case if you are, you know, rich or <laughs> you are really enthusiastic about having a, a really beautiful and wonderful case. Um, the other good thing to mention about this is this actually has really good filtration in it. Um, I know I brought some off a little bit of dust there, but this is pretty much untouched. I haven't had to clean this, and I've had this for uh, over two years now, I think. So it's it's in really good shape. Uh, I mean, it's, it's can't really tell everything, but I mean, you can't see much dust in there at all. Uh, try to take a look around. I mean, power supply is still shiny. Everything still looks uh, pretty clean, and I haven't really done much to it in the past uh, year. So um, it's just a matter of uh, you know keeping the right airflow through your case, and you'll be able to keep all the dust out. Plus, with the filters on the inlets, you're not going to get any dust in there. And I have a dog, so I was pretty pretty shocked not to see any kind of hair in there. So first thing we're going to do in order to kind of prepare here is, well, I'm going to turn the power off on the at the switch on the power supply, that's off. Um, this is just kind of more like a safety precaution. The other thing is, I'm going to start unplugging things. Now, uh, one thing that you want to try to do is get an ESD strap. I have one. I have misplaced it for the time being, so I'm just going to go without it. It's not 100% necessary, but it's <laughs> really a very useful thing. Uh, you can really be able to, you'll be able to touch things without, you know, too much to worry about uh, getting a kind of a static discharge. and. Don't let anybody fool you. It, just because you don't feel or see or even hear the static charge, uh, discharge tapping something, you, it still is a good chance that you'll short something out and damage some components even if you don't see it or hear it. Um, at the point that you would see or hear it, uh, well, hear it basically, you're pretty much assured that you broke several things when you touched it. So, <laughs> uh, But you don't actually have to hear static electricity for you to uh, do damage to equipment. Um, so always try to make sure you're grounded to something. I'm keeping my hand on the power supply casing here, which is a nice metal object that should be pretty well grounded. Um, that's one way to make sure that you discharge all of your static electricity. Uh, another thing you can do is get an ESD bench, uh, basically a rubber mat that will help disperse the electric, uh, any kind of static charges in your body. <laughs> which is good if you're in like a cold, dry climate where it's pretty good, easy to get static. So going ahead and disconnecting everything possible here. <coughs> and there's a fairly uh, unique way this case handles a lot of the back panel stuff. There's a side panel on the back which you have to take out, which is actually a lot better than any of the clips that uh, you typically see on most cases. Because those tend to not work <laughs> or just kind of bend or break things. So I'm not a big fan of those for the most part. Some of these screws are, of course, a little bit stiff. There we go. You want to be sure to make sure, uh, you know, keep track of all your screws and bits and pieces because you don't want to lose something that you're going to need at some point. All right. So, with all that unscrewed, uh, when you're taking off your uh, video cards, a lot of times there will be a some kind of a clip or retention uh, device that will be attached to uh, Oh, there goes that. <laughs> Found a way to get the door off. Learned something new today. That's fantastic. So, anyway, so a lot of times you'll find some way to... Um, uh, man, I just thought, I just forgot what I was even saying. Oh yeah, there's a, some kind of retention, like right here, for example. Um, this is how you need to disconnect uh, your video cards. So, you know, you have to hit these little buttons here and make sure that uh, you get your stuff off there. Don't just go pulling at stuff, otherwise you might break something again. Uh, so, I'll grab my other one off there. 
It's my two GTX 680s. Preferred brand there is EVGA just because it's a fantastic brand. Also have a, an audio card. If you've never had an audio card, I uh, highly recommend uh, giving a shot to one sometime. They are really, really useful and they make things sound a lot better if you have the right speakers or headphones. Alright, now I do have uh, an H100 uh, water cooler here, which is great for uh, cooling your uh, CPU. It's a great closed circuit uh, application, but I'm not a big fan of the closed circuit when I can liquid cool pretty much everything. So <laughs> it's a lot better to have a, a custom made loop. That way you can get all of your uh, get all of your different components water cooled. So with a closed loop, it just kind of this whole radiator right here is just taking up a whole lot of space. So <laughs> it's better to get your whole to get like your custom loop built that way. You don't have uh, you know this kind of thing going on because I would much rather use you know this back bay plus this one or maybe even on the bottom have a radiator there. Just different ways of getting the uh, getting the system to cool off the water. <laughs> and you do have to be somewhat mindful of what you're disconnecting and where you're plugging it into and all that kind of thing. Um, again, this is one of those things where, or one of those types of uh, boards that came with a little front side connector, which are great little edge connectors because they really make things a lot easier. Um, so I'm just going to leave that on for now. That way I know where uh, where to plug things back into later. This is another Asus uh, board, by the way. Uh, actually a really good board. I had absolutely no problems with it. And it worked just fantastically throughout the entire entirety of my uh, use for it. And these, <laughs> this is a, a USB 3.0 plug that uh, got kind of messed up somewhere along the line. Um, so unfortunately I can't use it anymore. <laughs> so some of my USB 3.0 parts on the case itself are not too useful. But that's fine. So have everything pretty much disconnected here um, except for the water cooler. I can pull that off after I get rid of my screwdriver. <sighs> So this is actually, again, not, not a bad water cooler at all. Um, I was running this processor at uh, about, I believe, 1.46 volts and uh, 4.9 gigahertz. It's 4.8. I think it's, it's 4.8 and 4.9. Uh, I believe 4.8. But uh, it's actually running, keeping the processor under load at about 42 Celsius. So really not a bad closed circuit water cooler at all. So if you're in the market for one of those, highly recommended. Um, not as expensive as, I mean, if you only want to cool those CPU, close your circuit water coolers are great because they are a very cheap alternative to uh, buying a whole liquid cooling setup, which can be quite expensive. <laughs> and there's that. Again, I know it seems like I'm maybe not following my own advice, but I am actually keeping grounded by keeping my elbow uh, firmly planted on this uh, power supply. All right. So I'll just disconnect a couple more things here. And that one's not coming off. All right. That. And I'm just going to kind of set that off to the side. Um, you're going to have some extra thermal paste on your processor as well as your water block or whatever uh, type of heat sink you're coming off of. So we'll figure, I'll show you how to get that off there in a little bit. Uh, for right now though, I'm just going to unscrew the rest of the screws on the motherboard here and uh, take that out. Uh, you can take the RAM out at this point if you uh, wanted to, but I'm going to forego that for the time being because I can more easily get those out once I uh, finish up my work here <laughs> with getting the motherboard up.
Now the screws for your motherboard, or holding your motherboard in place, are more likely than not going to be ones that came with the case. So you definitely want to be careful not to lose those. Guys, if you lose those, you're maybe a little SOL. You have to go to a hardware store or try to salvage some from somewhere else. So kind of just an extra pain you'd have to deal with. Also, of course, be careful when you're, you know, moving your screwdriver around. Try not to get the uh, screwdriver touching anything that shouldn't, or scratching the PCB in any way. Scratching motherboard could be could be pretty disastrous. This should be my last screw. So I think. Never know for sure. Oops, we have to disconnect my SATA wires here. I'm gonna pull those out real quick. One thing I didn't mention that I really like about my new board is that it seems like all the SATA ports are the same type and brand. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, some of the controllers for some of the SATA ports on this board and most of the boards that. I've seen are uh, part some from Intel, some from uh, Micron Systems, uh, and I've had problems with getting devices to work if they're on, uh, getting different devices to work if they're using different ports from the other one. So really nice actually to have the same thing going on. Uh, now the other thing here is with these closed circuit water coolers, they're really any cooler. It's uh, not uh, it's not built for the board itself. You're going to have these backplate connectors for it. So you want to make sure you get that off too, which may require a separate tool. In this case, I've got one of these cool screwdrivers that has a hex on one end too. So you should be able to unscrew that fairly easily this way. So I'll just pull that off real quick. We'll retain that because I'm still going to use it for at least the time being. So, another thing worthy of mentioning is uh, when you're installing a new motherboard and processor oftentimes, uh, particularly if using Windows, not so sure about Linux, uh, but definitely Windows, you really want to make sure you uh, are ready to format your hard drive and just get a new system going all together. Um, not only is a fresh start great for you know, troubleshooting and all that kind of stuff, but it's uh, usually going to be pretty much required because of the fact that <laughs> There's uh, so many different drivers and other kind of conflicts that can occur, so it's really good to just get a fresh start and a clean install of your operating system. So here we go with the board. Um, it is complete, finished, taken apart, gone, out of the case. Uh, pretty simple uh, procedure there, nothing too bad about it. The um, thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to clean off the water block here and uh, just kind of get all of the excess heat, uh, heat compound out there, or thermal compound out there, and uh, maybe prop just clean up the processor a little bit. Um, so for that I'm going to get some isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel, and uh, I'll be right back to finish that up.